Gestalt is a framework that I've been using more and more. I think it's a really great JavaScript framework, especially for people who are newer to JavaScript frameworks. And that's because a lot of the code just looks like basic JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. And um, it also leans into something called reactive coding. So you can define variables with a dollar sign instead of const or let or var. And it will update that variable whenever any of the dependencies change. So it'll update this dimensions object whenever width or height or margins updates, which is really nice when you're trying to keep things in sync just throughout your application. So what I would recommend if you're interested in creating Svelte apps, if you're unfamiliar with Svelte, go to svelte.dev and they have a really good tutorial. Um, so just walk through it maybe try out some things on your own. So to walk through this code base really quickly, we have this app.svelte component. Looks a lot like the React app component where every four seconds we're grabbing new data. And then we have a timeline, a scatter plot, and a histogram. And then just to go through the timeline really quickly. So for the timeline, we're pulling in these individual components, grabbing a unique ID for that gradient defining our props. So these are things that are passed to timeline for whenever it's instantiated, in this case in app. And we have width and height. And this is because in Svelte you can bind to the width and the height of any element, any div. And what Svelte does is it makes an iframe and then whenever that iframe is resized, it'll update the variable names. So our width and height variables will always be in sync with the size of uh, this outer div. We have margins, we're combining this in a reactive statement, so our dimensions will always stay up to date even when the width changes, like so. And then we have reactive statements for x scale, y scale, our scaled accessor functions. We go ahead and use our chart component. We add the gradient, x-axis, y-axis, and then we draw an area with a gradient and then a line with no gradient. And then within this chart folder, we have our line. Looks very similar. Um, we're saying we're creating this line generator, updating it if this is an area. This syntax is helpful in Svelte. It'll create a block and then update anything in that block if one of the variables changes. And then computing that line and throwing it in here. We also added this um, style so that we can pass in something like the fill, a specific fill for this line. We also have a chart component and this is a little bit of a hack. I haven't found a great way to do this in Svelte um, but I wanted to try out using context. So the way Svelte context works is it expects the contents to not change. So we're passing in a writable. So we have this current dimensions object. And then whenever we're using this context, say in axis, we're grabbing that dimensions writable and then just you can do dollar sign and a variable name if it's a writable to grab the value and keep that updated. So kind of a workaround for now. So in our axis, we're grabbing however many ticks we want. And we have this all in one component. It's a little bit hard to do multiple components in the same file for Svelte. So this just felt right for me if you're going to go ahead and make your own access component. Feel free to use the same one or um, maybe you have an, a separate access horizontal and access vertical, vertical component. It's totally up to you, whatever feels right for your Svelte app. But you can see here we have dynamic styles depending on if it's an X or Y dimension axis. And then we have our gradient, we have our circles. And we also have that naive way of doing the axis. So we're um, binding the ref variable to this G element. And then if that exists, we're selecting that node using D3 select, creating a D3 selection object and calling our access generator. So feel free to poke around. And 
Hopefully this just gives a good template for, I learned D3, I learned Svelte, how do I put them together? And as usual, my answer is let Svelte handle as much as possible and use D3 for all of the things it's really good at, except for the DOM manipulation. So um, colors and manipulating data, grabbing data, all of these things that are really useful, um, but then letting Svelte handle the drawing to the DOM is just a really nice workflow. If you want to keep learning about how to build real world apps with the latest technologies and other career related topics, then start right now by subscribing to our channel and liking this video.